The personality type descriptions that you read online are missing something crucial, and we're going to uncover the truth in this video. Welcome to this deep dive into your personality type. In this video, we're going to answer these three questions. First, what makes your personality type unique? Second, how do your MBTI and Enneagram types interact? And third, what practical steps can you take to harness your strengths and improve your weaknesses? This goes beyond the normal type descriptions that you read online and gives you a richer, more fulfilling, and more nuanced perspective of personality type and how to blend these two versions of understanding yourself at a deeper level. And stick around to the end because I've poured hours and hours into understanding these two different frameworks, and I'll give you a PDF at the end that you can use to understand more about how it works and you can get all the details that we'll go through in this video. Because you don't want just a surface level understanding. Once you start to get into personality type, okay, at the start, it's nice to have this surface level understanding where it's not too in depth and you're not getting bogged down with all this jargon. But eventually you're going to want to flesh that out a bit so you get a more richer, nuanced understanding of who you are so that you can leverage your strengths so that you can shore up some of your weaknesses and manage them better and live a life that is fulfilling and aligned with who you are as a person. So in order to explain these two, two different personality type systems, we need to talk about the fundamental wiring of cognitive functions, which is what uh, emerged into the Myers-Briggs type indicator framework. And then after that, we'll go into the Enneagram type and I'll make it easier to understand by giving you my model of understanding. So as you can see on the screen over here, on the left is the life domains, and on the right is the Enneagram World Bliss Guard. Life domains is my version of explaining these different cognitive function frameworks, the dichotomies. Um, you have logic for L, which is the thinking function. You have ideas, intuiting, F is for feelings or feeling, and E is for experiences or the sensing realm. And if you look at it, you can break these down into two different sides. The left side is the defensive introverted side, and the right side is the offensive extroverted side. So if you take logic, which is a way of making decisions, making judgments based off what is objectively true, it's using impersonal frameworks and models to understand the world. And you put that in the defensive realm, the introverted side. This is what you subjectively know is true for yourself. So you get a focus on internal logic and principles. You get um, analytical, objective, systematic problem solving. As a character or a character class, I call this the analyzing adept. The analyzing adept is that character within you, that part of yourself that is focused on making sense of the world. And then on the right side, you have an offensive, extroverted use of logic, of thinking, of that impersonal decision-making framework. And so that is pushing it out into the outer world. It's more breadth-focused, more expansive, as with all the offensive styles, more AOE, area of effect style. And as a character, I call this the strategizing commander, and this character is focused on external systems and efficiency or effectiveness. And for the characteristics that often come out through that is organized, decisive, goal-oriented, and structured. So you can see how there are two different ways of using logic, two different ways of using thinking to interact with the world. And there are eight different cognitive functions that we all use that mix and match into your personality type. Unfortunately, in this video, I cannot explain all the different function stacks for each personality type, but I will go through a few of them so that we can use them as examples in the later section. And let's keep going down through this. So again, we now we have ideas. Ideas is intuiting. This is a perceiving function, a way of gathering information, learning about the world based on connecting the dots, on pattern recognition, on saying this thing and this thing happened. What is that leading to? What does that mean? And if you bring that to the introverted defensive realm, it's more focused, it's narrowing down, it's funneled into one precise insight. As a character, I call this the visioning mystic. So this mystic character is focused on internal insights 
and future possibilities. Some characteristics are visionary, abstract thinker, insightful, and foresighted. The mystic is that character within you that is predicting how things are going to pan out in one focused way. It's saying all this stuff is going to here. That is what this means. This is the meaning of what has happened. And then in an expansive way, moving it over to the offensive, the extroverted realm, you take ideas and you throw them everywhere. You splash them around the place like fireworks going off. This is the innovating explorer as a character. The character of the explorer focuses on external patterns, connecting the dots of what is happening out there. So it's like rapid fire idea generation so that you can pinpoint different opportunities, different um, chances, different methods of interacting with the thing, different ways of using the thing. And some of the characteristics that come from the explorer type, if you lean into this character, if this is one of your core characters within your mental questing party, then you're likely innovative, idea generating, spontaneous, exploratory. But it depends on the strength of that character within your psyche. And with feelings, feelings are a way of making judgments. As opposed to thinking, they are about the personal criteria. So thinking logic is making decisions using the data points and objectives. And sometimes people go into that. Sometimes people are an object or not an objective are a data point that needs to be considered for feeling. That is the main criteria. How is this going to impact somebody else or myself? And it's a focused on values. What is valuable? What does a person see as important? You bring that into the defensive realm, introverted, the resonating soul is the character that represents this. The soul is the character who is uh, focused on internal values and ethics. They are authentic, they're empathic, value-driven, and introspective. Flip that over to the outer world, offensive use of feelings, more proactive use of feelings, you get the unifying envoy. The envoy is an ambassador-like character, the one that walks up to people, shakes hands, hugs it out, talks you know, emotes, expresses feelings and how they feel about things. And so this is a, a focus on external harmony and social connections. Some of the characteristics are caring, uh, socially aware, cooperative, res relationship focused. And one more, experiences, another perceiving function, a way of learning, gathering information. But this time it's not about connecting the dots. It's about using your body as the instrument to assess what a thing is using your senses and so you take experiences sensing and you put it into the internal world introverted sensing you get the stabilizing guardian as a character the focus is on internal past experiences reflecting and recalling facts about what happened some of the characteristics are data oriented reliable traditional memory focused and then in the extroverted world, the offensive world, extroverted sensing is the engaging adventurer. It's using your body in a more immediate, quick acting. Uh, so the focus is on external sensory information and the present moment. Characteristics are adventurous, spontaneous, detail aware, hands on. So now you have all eight of these different cognitive functions. They mix and match into your personality type. And some of the explanations that I read are more focused on one version of the cognitive function, and some are more focused on the other to give you a more rounded mix of an understanding. So if you didn't quite resonate with each and every word, that's okay. And that's part of what we're going to get into in this video is how to understand some of the different dynamics of that. So let's say that you have read your description online, and you see all these memes, you're an INFP, and you're like, it doesn't quite fit the mold. So let's let's make an INFP character here. We have introverted feeling, the soul as the main character of the questing party. And then to support that as a mentor-like character is our auxiliary function, extroverted intuiting. And then we need our tertiary function, our our sidekick. The sidekick is there to support us. But we should really listen to the mentor, the one that is saying, go out there, explore, do new things, shake things up. But the soul is like, well, I need to know if I really resonate with this, if it fits me and my identity first. 
the guardian is saying, yeah, well, check in with your past. Did you do that in the past? Did you like it in the past? Did it work well in the past? If not, don't do it again. If yes, do more of that. And it creates kind of this um, grounding force, the hobbit hole, our comfort zone of physical comfort, recalling past experiences, even if we didn't really like those experiences. And then we also have the maverick. The maverick is extroverted thinking. This is the commander, mirrorly opposed to the soul. The soul is like, does this feel good for me as a human, as a person? Does this resonate with myself? The commander's like, get it done. Let's get a strategy, apply it, you know, attack and marshal our resources to get it done. So this is the INFP. Okay. And um, the scale of these, this in our daily life, it's kind of hard to measure. Of course, it depends on your experiences. The INFP, the innovating soul. This is our character. Now, if we move over to the Enneagram world. So the Enneagram is another system that's often used for personality type, for understanding yourself and others. And whereas I treat the cognitive functions as characters, as character classes, these different parts of yourself, I treat the Enneagram as the cultures that you grew up in. Mainly one culture, maybe you moved around a bit, maybe you traveled the world, you were a pirate, as in my Pirate Tales game here, and you sought adventure and discovery. Maybe you bounced around a couple of the different continents. And so Enneagram has nine different zones, different continents, different areas that represent um, the different personality type fixations and aspects. And so if you were to grow up in one area, then naturally your style uh, would be flavored with that cultural upbringing. I grew up in the United States up until I was 18, then I moved to Japan. I've lived in Japan for 17 years or so. So almost about the same. And I have a lot of different aspects from both cultures, but I'm still U.S. American for the most part, you know, and I have a lot of Japanese cultural sprinklings. So take the INFP, as I described it before, we'll put it into a couple of these different contexts so that you can see that there's a difference of upbringing that flavors your personality type. So really, I don't know, I'll go through some of these. So you have, where can I go? Put me somewhere safe. We have Iros, which is the Enneagram type nine area. Falstron is Enneagram type one, and I'll go through explaining these two. Tuslin is type two, three is Lucresh, four is Kikoa, five is Neochorus, six is Zephoa, and seven is Ibia, and eight is Krohazul. And then there are these two other areas that maybe I can explain later. This will all be in the PDF too. So starting at type nine, Iros. Iros is a peaceful continent with towns built around geothermally heated lake openings. Buildings are simple wooden structures based off the ground with uh, tiled roofs. Citizens maintain peace by appeasing the dual gods, but with so much focus on balance, they have fallen asleep to their basic needs and world events. So the Enneagram type 9 has this core desire of to have inner and outer peace. We don't like to rock the boat. We do anything that we can to maintain the stability of that boat. We hate conflict. I'm an Enneagram type 9. Our core fear is conflict and disconnection, being disconnected from other people. Um, and one thing that we often do in order to maintain the harmony is to repress our emotions, to numb ourselves. And some of the characteristics that come from that perspective and that fixation and that focus is easygoing, accommodating, agreeable, and complacent. So maybe if you're an INFP and you grow up in this Iros type place, well, you have more of the probably don't rock the boat, you know, pay attention to other people so that you don't create any conflict. Don't assert yourself because that's going to create conflict creates more of this easygoing type energy. Well, what if you grew up in a different place? What if you grew up in this place down here? Enneagram 4, what I call Kikoa. Kikoa is home to several small bands of lost ones who ventured to the broken isles hundreds of years ago. 
Many are constantly searching for a way to fix their flaws and redeem themselves in the eye of the maker, while others have given up and fallen deeper into grief and envy. It's quite a different flavor of life, quite a different approach to living, a different culture. So type four, the individualist, the core desires to find themselves and their significance. Why me? Why am I here? Why am I unique? Why am I important? And one of the core fears is having no identity and no personal significance. So they're constantly looking for that because sometime through their upbringing, they got the message that maybe they're not enough. Maybe they're broken and they're looking for this piece of themselves, this part of themselves that is like able to be shown to the world. Like this is, this is why I'm special. This is why I'm here. And some of the characteristics that come from that is creativity, introspection, sensitive, unique. So an INFP, innovating soul who grows up in Kikoa is going to be way different from living in Iros in type nine, as opposed to type four. You know, they're going to be leaning heavier, probably into introverted feeling, into what is important to them and their values and their emotions and finding expression of that. I'm back. I had to go do something and uh, it's the next day. So we finished talking about INFP stuff. Also, I did a little uh, housekeeping on, on this page here. And this is what you can get if you stay to the end. I'll give you the link to get it. So we talked about INFPs going from these different Enneagram locations and how that flavors your personality, how it changes your personality and adds more nuance to it. Because you have different blends of uh, experiences, your personality type, cognitive functions, uh, interests, desires, passions, fears, everything gets compiled into becoming who you are as, as your personality type. But the issue is, these are all just models. They're different ways of understanding the human cake. And we cannot encapsulate everything that happens to us within a model. And these are, again, they're models. They're not the real thing. This, this is not, this isn't real life. These are just experiences of it and different ways of understanding it. It's like a menu. You use a menu in a restaurant to pinpoint what you want to order, to talk about the thing, the real thing, and then to get that thing and then to eat it. You don't eat the menu and then get upset at the cook, the waiter, or the restaurant for not giving you the real thing, <laughs> for it not being fulfilling, right? And so these personality types and the models that are being used are to understand what is going on underneath, okay? So if you are a little bit different and something doesn't fit, well, it could just be that you're trying to get too nuanced with everything and make sure that everything fits exactly to one personality typing system, which is the benefit of combining different systems in this way, because it does give you more of an understanding. And even so, if it does not fit 100%, that's okay. It doesn't mean that you are not that personality type. It just means that you are a bit unique. Um, Dario Nardi has his book, Decode Your Personality. And Within it, it talks about the two different versions of each of the cognitive functions. Um, and there's the analytic and holistic side of them. So if you look at that, you could also understand your personality type in a different way. That might give you the granularity that you want if you are still not accepting that, you know, maybe you are this personality type and you just do things a little bit different because of your upbringing and your experiences. That being said, let's go through another round of this with a different personality type. We'll use INFJ, the unifying mystic, as our, our guinea pig here. Okay, so you can see that there are, again, four different main cognitive functions. There are four others that are still within all of us that you can use, that you can build better intrapersonal rapport with these different characters. And yet there are these four that mainly show up as this is me, this is not me, your ego identifies or doesn't identify with these. And um, they are the main characters within your life's story. You have the mystic as the hero, you have the envoy 
which is again peopling in a sense, as the mentor. So this is the one that's saying, okay, you have your mystic ideas, you have your visions for how things are, how things could be, and the ability to go into brief trances and see things differently. And then the envoy is saying, as the mentor, I've been in the outer world, I've experienced the other world. If you want to grow, if you want to expand your ability to make an impact on the world or to get quicker feedback so you can understand people at an even deeper level or lead people if that's what you want to do, then you got to do the envoy stuff. You got to go into the outer world. You got to proactively support people, build bridges, foster relationships, and pay attention to how to make people understand your ideas through emoting and through getting them emotionally on board. That's just those two characters, okay? And then you also have the adept that's saying, well, let's let's be a bit more critical of this. Let's think this over a little bit. Might not want to go out there and people, let's just, you know, put up this ice wall and protect ourselves so that we don't need to deal with the energies of other people, which is very compelling. But as the sidekick, it is not the mentor. The sidekick is there to support the hero to get to a place of growth and change and transformation. And the envoy is the one that is going to do most of that. We're going to coach you on how to do most of that. And you also have the um, adventurer down here, which is the maverick of your party, the one that's like, let's let's turn up the experiences to 11. Let's go be in our senses. Let's not think about what this could lead to or what this means. Let's just do it. Let's just be present and indulge in our senses. That can be a place of discomfort for a lot of INFJs. But it's still part of the team. It's the Maverick. It's like Raphael and the Ninja Turtles. Like, come on, man, get get on the team. Stop being so moody. Let's, let's go in this direction. Then you can help guide me in a way that you can help me be present and notice the physical reactions that other people are having to my ideas, to my uh, metaphors and the ways that I explain these things. And with that sensory acuity, then you can act differently. You can change. You can get better feedback. You can adapt and mold them, their impressions, their reactions, as well as the direction that you're going. That's a lot, right? Just from these four characters. So we have these characters. And let's throw them into Bliss Guard. Dun, dun, dun. So we already talked about nine, and we talked about four. Over here within your sheet, you can see, um, or you will be able to see, nine is the peacemaker, as the Enneagram type. Um, it's got some core desires, core fears, characteristics. And four is the individualist. Again, core desires, uh, fears, and characteristics. Let's put the INFJ into Faustron. Faustron is type one, the reformer. So before I talk about it as a, a location to give you the symbol, symbolic understanding of what is going on in a, in a metaphor, because you have so much more depth to your understanding than you think. You've read hundreds of stories, you've watched movies, thousands of stories, I don't know. And you have this archetypal understanding of life. And so within a story or this metaphorical context, you can extrapolate that and you can get a deeper understanding of life, which I'm sure you know as an INFJ. So type one, the reformer, core desire is to be good, to have integrity, core fear, being corrupt, being evil, characteristics, principled, perfectionistic, self-controlled, rational. There's this sense for the type one of, I need to be pure, I need to be clean, I need to be angelic in some way and not corrupted by the external experience. Well, you could see that maybe the mystic and the adept and the adventurer are kind of in cahoots on this one. The mystic is trying to see where things are going and make sure that they are protected, that you are protected at all times from external influence, especially in the present moment, especially uh, impure th thoughts and behaviors uh, and you'll notice that a lot of type 1s are uh, really into sex. So you have these different characters here. 
And Faustran is a utopian society striving for balance and perfection. However, underneath its pristine surface lies a magical corruption that distorts both reality and life within the country. The rich have found ways of routinely purging themselves while the less fortunate suffer from the dissonance. So this describes the levels of development and fixation within the Enneagram. So an INFJ who wants to strive for perfectionism and maybe balance too is likely going to balance between these two characters here and be afraid of their adventurer, right? The adept is there to help you analyze and define and refine and get very, very crystal clear on a concept, on an idea, on what a thing is in terms of the logical conceptual understanding of it. And so it's constantly bouncing back before between those and likely not getting a lot of external feedback from people. And if it is, it's, it could be um, working to understand what they're saying, but also to implant your own ideas into that um, understanding of their understanding. I have an ENTP friend who is a type one and he only drinks water and maybe tea. I don't even know if he drinks tea. He will not drink, you know, any soda, any alcohol, anything like that. His his mom is a neuroscientist, so she has properly told him about the drawbacks of alcoholic consumption. Uh, but he is very focused on being pure in that sense. And he's got a different set of dynamics going on, but it's another way of thinking about the culture that your cognitive functions as characters grew up in and how that shifts and changes who you are. So let's put the INFJ over here in Neochorus. Neochorus is the type 5 zone. Type 5, the investigator. Core desire to understand the world. Core fear, being useless, helpless, incapable. Characteristics, analytical, perceptive, curious, isolated. So you can see that this is a different blend of the INFJ personality type. Instead of focusing on to be good, to have integrity, to show up as the person who is uh, respected and is pure, it's I'm going to understand the world. I'm going to understand everything on a very deep level. And the fear of being useless and helpless and incapable comes from a lack of understanding. If you understand more, then your information is inherently valuable if you can communicate it. If you can communicate those metaphors and ideas and concepts, likely through the envoy, through expressing it in a uh, structured way, as well as an emotional way, that gets other people on board. And Yes, analytical, perceptive, curious, isolated. If you're constantly studying and pinpointing what is right, what is wrong, people get in the way. People muddy the waters. Emotions, feelings muddy the waters. People's values. Because do values really matter if a thing is wrong or correct? Maybe. It depends on your perspective of the world. Neochorus is a magi- a magitechnologically advanced society with a minimalist approach to life and material wealth. The comforts and convenience of technology have led many citizens to interact mainly through guided illusions, abandoning their bodies and slowly disappearing into madness. A lot of these worlds, I know I've painted them as the dark side of it because they're fantastical worlds and there, there must be a little bit of drama in order to make it fun. I'm sure there are many good things about all these two. And actually, I made lists and lists of different locations within this and like quest givers and things like that. And stuff I've just nerded out on. We kind of have this understanding of technology and magic technology. So this blend of magic and technology with a slightly minimalistic approach, as well as when I envisioned this area, it was like, People uh, suit up in kind of like a virtual reality setup, and then they send their their clone 
their illusion to go out there and interact in the world and they can be in their in their house or in their apartment or whatever the location is so they're not actually fully physically interacting with the world and this is something that a lot of type fives can understand and a lot of infjs can understand of the body being the container the vessel for your head and your thoughts and like yeah i, I gotta keep my body upkeep <laughs> like i have to feed this thing or my thoughts won't be able to continue uh, i guess depending on your spirituality and perspective of the world as well so you can see that this is again a different way of interacting with the world than with fostron and there are tons of different variations not all infps are only nines or fours there are many who are type sixes as well and there are uh, infjs who could be twos uh, you might even flip into a seven that would be interesting so there are different ways of interacting with the world and in order to fulfill all my promise <laughs> let's talk again about these to make it abundantly clear what makes your personality type unique the combination of your cognitive functions the order that they're in it's like okay you have this uh, commander character extroverted thinking this offensive uh, external systems and efficiency organized decisive goal oriented oriented and structured this character could be the hero of the story could be the maverick of the story it could be the rebel your fifth function it could be the trickster the troll within your story the seventh function it can play all these different roles depending on your personality type it's like bruce willis can be in many different roles he can play the different roles but he's still bruce willis and he still kind of has that bruce willis feel to him i don't know why that character came up or why that actor came up but it did so your personality type is unique based off the cognitive functions based off the enneagram culture which is mainly your fixations the things that you want to avoid as well as delve into in your life the things that you prize the things that you want to make sure that you don't succumb to and your natural experiences and your brain wiring if you go into a career as a copywriter and a marketer you are naturally going to develop areas of your brain that are responsible for those activities and through that development it's going to strengthen those and you're going to gain access to the skill set of those it's like putting points in your talent tree of your brain there are life experiences too for me again moving to japan when i was 18 been here for about 17 years that shaped who i am as a person and how i express myself also doing youtube and you know running a business and learning coaching and hypnosis and personality type these all impact the emergent of my personality type and you have that too so if you don't resonate with the stereotypes of your personality type that are out there on the internet then take what works and ignore what doesn't or study more about what doesn't and if you end up liking it then good <laughs> if you end up finding that that is true to you then good like for me um i didn't know which enneagram type i was at the start i thought i was a four i was you know really into my emotions and i there was a lot of like suffering artist vibe to myself before <laughs> before i did a lot of work on myself but when i looked at some of the aspects of enneagram 9 and the suppression of emotions and not wanting to be angry and counting tallying how many times a day i got irked i got angry and i suppressed that instantly or how i'd blur my vision physically so that i wouldn't have a conflict tracking these patterns helped me realize that no i'm a 9 i'm from iros i'm appeasing these two gods the god of fire and anger and the god of water and i'm trying to balance harmony with this burning 
anger inside me. I think I've done pretty well, but it's there. And it's something to, to be aware of because that's the culture that I've grown up in. How do your MBTI and Enneagram types interact? I think I've explained that pretty well. Different cultures, different Enneagram types bring out different facets of your cognitive functions. And each of the cognitive functions have many different facets within it too. Another one, let's do INFP who pops over to Zephoa. Okay, Zephoa is six. Type six, the loyalist, core desire to have security and support, core fear, being without support or guidance, characteristics, reliable, anxious, loyal, responsible. That sounds quite different, right, than creative, introspective, sensitive, unique, or easygoing, accommodating, agreeable, and complacent. Because it's highlighting different parts of your personality type. If we read the description of Zephoa, Zephoa is a city in perpetual night, haunted by whispering horrors where fear and paranoia run rampant. With a long history of betrayal and chaos, their faith in the systems meant to protect them has all but crumbled. This is a darker place focused on security and safety. And through that, you need loyalty. You need to focus on your core knit group of people, making sure that they are trustworthy so that you are safe as well. And if you show up as trustworthy and safe and secure, then you can bring that to support other people within the, the culture as well. Very different, probably more focused on introverted sensing as maintaining consistency, maintaining tradition, looking to the past, maybe in a more positive way than other types, to see what worked in the past, what didn't work, and how can I implement that. And I call introverted sensing and introverted intuiting protectors as classes because they're focused on looking to the past or looking to the future to predict what is going to happen or to assess what has happened and use that to predict what is going to happen and make sure that it is safe so that you can protect yourself. Quite a different experience from the other Enneagram types. And number three, what practical steps can you take to harness your strengths to in, in a little bit? And what practical steps can you take to harness your strengths and improve your weakness or weaknesses? There are many different ways that you can do this. One, if you look at the personality type and the cognitive functions, you can see there's a lot of push and pull. Jung was a lot about balance and interplay between two different sides, two different dichotomies. If you're really stressed out, you want to hop over to your tertiary and your inferior function. For an INFP who's really stressed out, take some time with the guardian, go do something nostalgic. Go do something that you have done before, you know what is going to happen, and you can re-experience it in a fun way or in a relaxing, calming way. Or add some sort of discipline strategy organization to your life. Wake up in the morning, check some things off a to-do list, clean your house. Surprisingly, you will feel better because your commander is like, finally, you gave me something to do. Give me something to do, right? It's making, it's satisfying these different aspects of yourself so that they don't burst out, so that they don't create chaos and havoc. The highest point for growth within cognitive functions is, well, first of all, make sure that you are doing enough of your dominant function. Make sure that your hero is the hero of your story. Maybe as an INFP, you got the message that being emotional is bad. Expressing your emotions is bad. Feeling the way that you feel is bad. Having the thoughts that you have is bad. Being slow and considerate and thoughtful before acting, before speaking up is bad. If that's the message that you got, maybe introverted feeling, maybe the soul has been suppressed. But you will never be satisfied in life if you don't honor that aspect of yourself because that is your core flow state that rejuvenates you, that makes you feel alive. So finding ways of being you and appreciating you, appreciating that emotional side of yourself the squishier, healer side of yourself. And listening to the mentor, which is the explorer for INFPs. 
get new contexts, explore, travel the world, experience things that you don't yet know are good for you, or you don't yet know for sure experientially that you like or don't like. When you do it, you'll find out more. And then you've defined your edges more, and you can understand more about who you are as a person and how you show up as a person. Also, self-expression through creation, through writing stories, through doing this type of stuff that I'm doing. Self-understanding through metaphors, analogies, stories. It's good for INFPs. For INFJ as the other example, I'm using this one because there are a lot of INFJs in the channel, but also because it's using four different cognitive functions. So again, the dominant function, your mystic, is the core of your personality type. You need more of that. Now, sometimes it's like trying to use a hammer for everything. Okay, There are eight different characters that bring different perspectives and skill sets to your approach to life. L-I-F-E, logic, ideas, feelings, experiences, your approach to life. But what I've noticed a lot of time, for, especially for introverts, is we don't do enough of our dominant function because we've gotten the message that we got to be more extroverted. we got to go do things in a different way. So for the mystic, lock yourself in your room, close the door, put yourself in the closet, turn off the lights, make it dark, and just ignore the sensory world and allow time for your ideas to marinate and percolate. Go out into nature. Just go for a walk and just let, let your unconscious mind free. And follow that. Trust it. As you probably do, and you've tried to communicate it to other people and they don't believe you, well, that's what the envoy is for. The envoy is going to help you structure your ideas in a way that impacts people emotionally and gets them again on board, or at least gets them off your back. <laughs> um, instead of going over to the sidekick, right? these are stress reliefs. The sidekick and the maverick are stress reliefs for you, the adept and the adventurer. The adept is always going to refine and narrow down and likely get overly critical and pinpoint mistakes and flaws in yourself and in other people. And it's going to say, well, People are, are horrible because of these things that they, they do, so I'm going to shut them all out. I'm going to lock myself up in Neochorus in this virtual reality world and not participate because it's painful, because I've tried before and people don't listen. And then it happens, and they come to me for help. And I'm like, I explained it to you before. I'm sure you know that experience. The mentor is going to help you with that. And it's hard. It's not... It's not easy. It's not easy to do the mentor. For the INFPs too, it's not easy to get out of our comfort zone and explore and shake things up and do things on a whim. Partially because both of these are offensive characters. They're extroverted characters. As opposed to our dominant, which is an introverted defensive character. It feels like you're going to run out of energy, especially for the type 5 Enneagrams. But you won't. You'll be okay. Anyway, if you need some light stress relief, go do Sudoku, play some chess, do some math, do something that is removing the emotional component and just being logically focused. Edit a document or something like that. But don't stay there. Don't stay there forever because that is not going to help you grow. Also, the adventurer. Make sure that you have some sort of like you're doing martial arts or rock climbing or at least going out for walks or bike rides or something like that. Being present, being physical, and appreciating your body for being there uh, is very, very helpful. So those are ways of leveraging uh, cognitive functions for self-development. There's also the Enneagram, which I'm not going to spend as much time on. But you see all these lines. You can move around the lines, and you can move left and right, we'll call it, up and down, around to get different insights, different perspectives, and different ways of interacting with the world. So someone from Kikoa, okay, the Enneagram 4 world, which is more like this lens, right? In the They ventured into the Broken Isles. They're looking for their maker. They've given up. They have this fallen uh, grief aspect to themselves. 
well, you could hop over to Lucresh, which is this uh, steampunk style place that's about efficiency, effectiveness, getting things done. The Achiever, type 3, core desire to be successful uh, and admired, core fear being worthless or failing, characteristics, ambitious, adaptable, image conscious, efficient. For you, Lucresh is a highly competitive steampunk style city with propaganda and citizen rankings displayed. Citizens often mechanically augment themselves to reach peak states of productivity and achievement, sometimes sacrificing their very human essence for prestige and admiration or admiration. It's like, I'm going to add technology to make myself more efficient, more effective. And where does that stop? That might be what you need. Remember, INFPs, get over here, go to Kikoa. I don't want to go back. Extroverted thinking, the commander, Logical, efficiency, effectiveness, getting things done, achievements. The commander probably likes the crash. He's like, this is where I want to be. Or she's like, this is where I want to be because it is focused on those different aspects. And that development in this framework gives you more appreciation for the struggles that you're going through, for the struggles that other people go through, and for their strengths and for your strengths too. You can admire people who have grown up in Lucresh and or people who are commanders because it just gives you a different perspective. And when you have that different perspective and you can build that intrapersonal rapport, you can accept the parts of yourself and know that there are no bad parts, then things become easier. You stop wasting energy. You stop leaking energy and you get to focus on more of your strengths as well as finding ways to manage your struggles. Not fully take care of your struggles and make that your focus of your entire life, because if you do that, what you focus on improves or expands. And so if you focus on your weaknesses, you're going to always find more weaknesses. If you focus on your strengths, you're going to find more strengths. You're going to find ways of utilizing those. Your reticular activating system will be like, oh, that's what you want to do. Let's go. You might be able to hop over here to Neochorus as an INFP and kind of experience a, a more analytical side, more analytical approach to life. That might work for you. Both fives and sixes are acutely aware of this no-go zone between four and five. That's like being on the edge of the earth, the pit of despair, chaos and broomfire and hell. Strogoth, as I call it. Strogoth is an odd zone where the unexpected thrives. Only a few known reports have emerged from those who claim they've been there. This is like the end of the world. Both fours and fives are acutely aware of that. So there is something you would have to compete with if you're going over to five from there. There's also the lines. So Kikoa could go up to Faustran, which we talked about before, thank God. Um, as in gaining some more understanding of how to be pristine and refined and likely hiding some of your uh, feelings and you know not expressing those as much. There are lessons to gain from all of these different ones, though the suggestion would be more likely to go to two, uh, which I can't explain all the different... They don't have the arrows here, and I don't want to go through all that. Um, two, Tusland, a very creative name. The Helper, core desire to be loved and appreciated, being unwanted, unworthy of love. It's the core fears. Characteristics, caring, generous, people-pleasing, empathetic. Maybe. Hop over to two. Tuslin's a, a collection of quirky towns built upon southern hospitality and a circular grid of streets where, with a giant dugout pit in the center. The dugout is covered by an adjustable magical dome that stores food for lavish festivals. Citizens work to exhaustion to prepare for the next event, fueled by pride and vanity. Maybe getting outside of your own suffering and going to support other people is something that you could learn from. 
you could gain experience in this other world, in this other continent, in this other culture. There are things to be aware of. Exhaustion from overly being focused on supporting other people. But for me, and I'm a different personality type, right? I'm a nine. But one thing that I've learned is getting outside of my own suffering has been very helpful. Finding ways of supporting other people, imagining that I have this endless tank of mana that I can use to heal and support other people has been life-changing. I was going to say a game-changer. It's been that too. And it's something that I wouldn't have naturally assumed based off just looking at my cognitive functions. Extroverted feeling type of, where, where does that really fit? Well, it's kind of in this rebellious character that's uh, a different pirate captain on a different ship going for the same gold and treasures. You would, you would naturally think there might be some conflict there. And there is. But also it's been very helpful for me. So I've explained a lot in this video. I understand that there are tons of things that we could not go into in this video. More dynamics, more interactions, more interplays. And unfortunately, that's that's how it is. Because I, I could make this video another three hours, but maybe that's not the right thing to do, or maybe it is. If it is, let me know down below in the comments if you'd like to see more of things like this. Before I forget, if you want access to this PDF, you can go to geekpsychology.com slash MBTI Enneagram. I'll put links down below in the description and in the comments so that you can access it and you can take time to delve into the world of BlissGuard as well as your cognitive functions. I wouldn't be doing my job following my dream if I didn't tell you to go to Path of Heroes Academy, poha.geekpsychology.com, and get my course that teaches the cognitive functions in this style and goes into more depth on how you can develop these characters so that you can access eight different points of view, eight different perspectives and skill sets to improve your life in all eight ways, all four different life domains and the different um, versions of it, introverting and extroverting sides of it, the inner game and the outer game. It's been a very good course from the feedback that I've heard, and it's been something that people use constantly throughout their daily life, whether it's just from creating the characters and interacting with those characters as your council of eight and brainstorming with them, getting ideas. How can I solve this problem? Well, let's talk to the soul. Let's talk to the commander. Let's talk to the mystic, the explorer, um, the adept, the envoy, the guardian, the adventurer. Let's talk to these different characters and get different perspectives so that we loosen our frame of mind and can proceed in a different way. Most of our problems come from being tunnel visioned on one specific problem or solution and we're not seeing things from different angles and if you do that then you gain access to better problem solving so you can handle life's curveballs with ease or another thing that people have said is that the missions that you go on i've added real life things that you can do to improve your weaknesses and to leverage your strengths for each of these cognitive functions so that is in there too and there are things that you can do to gain xp to level up these different characters in your life. I hope to see you there. Let me know down below in the comments what resonated most with you, what kind of things do you want to see more of, and how you're going to apply this to your life. Because if it's just learning and you're not applying it, then nothing happens because learning is behavior change. Good luck, have fun. Peace.